Today, we're taking a look at some of nature's failures. I'm cutting right to the chase on this one. We gotta start with the poster child for extinction and the all-time winner of the Darwin Awards, dodo birds. The dodo bird is around three feet or just under one meter tall and around 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. Upon first discovery of the dodo bird, it seems so ridiculous some scientists doubted they existed. Studying the history of science has allowed me to realize that scientists are just as close-minded as the rest of us. Really? Big dumb bird was that far removed from reality for you? Granted, this was 1598, and in the 1600s, Galileo was put under house arrest for disagreeing with the Bible. If you're a naturalist back then, and you couldn't remember if Jesus mentioned big dumb birds, you'd be best to keep your mouth shut lest you want the guillotine. Now, when you think about dodo birds, the first word that probably comes to your mind is stupid. It certainly wasn't intelligent by any stretch, but this bird was actually just a product of an isolated environment that never required it to develop a sense of fear or intelligence. Dodos have very little fight or flight response, and weren't afraid of humans at all. The dodo might not have been smart, but that's actually not why it died. Sadly, it was because humans cut down its forest for timber, leaving them much more exposed to any predators. This is disastrous for an animal with no fight or flight response. Also, humans accidentally introduced stowaway animals from ships such as rats that outcompeted the dodo for food. Leave it to humans to murder an entire species and then call them an idiot for it forever after. The next animal on this list is the incisi- inci- incisivo- incisviosaurus. The mispronounced incisivosaurus. This dinosaur is like the aftermath of a strange Timmy Turner and Velociraptor fanfiction from Fur Affinity, and the resulting offspring gets raised in a strict vegetarian household. Some of the dinos in this genus were thought to be omnivores, but I thought that was a good way to end that joke, so I'm keeping it despite the misinformation. This dino had a set of huge buck teeth and it could grow up to three feet or one meter. It's thought that this animal used its feathers as a mating display, a behavior shown in many bird species today, or to intimidate others while fighting, which is hilarious because no matter how dangerous this thing actually is, it just looks like SpongeBob SquarePants as a dinosaur. Some of you might be wondering why this thing went extinct. To that I say, if the T-Rex couldn't survive the mass extinction, what makes you think this buck-toothed goof would be any different? Speaking of weird teeth, have you ever looked at an elephant's lower jaw with the desire to surgically replace it with a shovel? If so, seek counseling, but not before you hear about the platybelodon. This relative to the modern elephant lived around 8 to 20 million years ago, and it looks like a regular elephant that had its snoot smashed flat with a comically oversized frying pan. Scientists used to think that it used its scoop-like lower jaw to shovel up vegetation as it grazed across the bottom of swamps for food, but now they think it may have used their teeth to strip bark and eat vegetation from the trees. Is it just me, or does everything about this animal make me think it belongs next to some kids cosplaying as characters from Avatar The Last Airbender? It's believed that these creatures died out due to a drought because of changing weather conditions at the end of the Miocene. Keeping up the brief streak of the freak teeth motif is the Helicoprion. This aquatic beta test for the circular saw lived around 280 million years ago. It has a continuous spiral of over 100 teeth in its mouth. They continue to make new teeth throughout their life, but the helicoprion never loses any of them. It just keeps growing the spiral. It has a completely different kind of bite than any other shark, as it has a swift chopping and slicing motion rather than a crushing and stabbing one. At first, all people had to go on was its fossilized tooth spiral, and they couldn't tell where the spiral went. Some put it inside the mouth, some put it below the jaw, and some put it on top of the snoot to block boop. Some even put it on its back. Multiple scientific discoveries and revolutions later, they no longer longer needed to play evolutionary pin the tail on the donkey. They found out that it really looked like this. Not quite as weird as we imagined it to be, but still pretty weird looking. Personally, I want it to look like the nose one because it's ridiculous, so I'm going to bury my head in the sand and believe what I want. Feel free to do it with me. Oh yeah, and we found out that it wasn't a shark, but a relative of sharks known as a ratfish. Next up is the terror bird. The terror bird is kind of like a big old ostrich that could swallow a dog whole. This flightless carnivorous bird lived around 5 million years ago in South America. It was around 3 meters or just under 10 feet tall and weighed 330 pounds or 150 kilograms. It has a very large sharp hooked beak and incredibly strong leg bones like an ostrich that could deliver a bone shattering kick. Not only that, but all of the bones in the terror bird's skull were fused as one big bone. This reinforced its head, allowing to smash its beak down in a much more aggressive peck than a regular bird. The closest living relative to terror birds hunts prey by 
picking it up and repeatedly smashing it against the ground until it stops moving. So some scientists think this is how the terror bird would hunt as well. This is kind of the same motion as one of those drinking bird toys that the school counselor had on their desk when you had to go there when you hit that kid with a rock. The only difference is that instead of taking a drink of water, it's using this motion to brutally incapacitate another animal to make them easier to consume. These birds were thought to have gone extinct because of changing weather patterns and out competition from other predators. The next animal on the list is Bovarasuchus. This creature was a crocodilian that's unlike anything we have today. The Bovarasuchus is what happens when a horse meets up with a crocodile from Craigslist without using protection. This crocodilian has narrow hooves instead of claws, unlike almost every other lizard-like creature, and its legs were also longer than most species of crocodilians. Its body looked as if it were more structured for running on land than swimming in water. Its teeth are flat and serrated, unlike the cone-shaped teeth of many other crocodilians, meaning it was designed for slicing through things, rather than gripping and holding on to its struggling victim until it met a watery grave. Some scientists theorize that it could run on two legs, and that it would be even faster when doing so, but some scientists said it was much too fat for this. I guess the only way to know would be to clone it. This creature was probably another example of something that went extinct because of out competition from other large predators. Last, but certainly not least, is the Opabinia. The Opabinia is an extinct marine arthropod that lived during the Cambrian period. It's pretty small, only around 4 to 7 centimeters or 1.6 to 2.8 inches long. It has five eyes that it likely used to scan for predators. Two look forward, two look sideways, and one in the middle looking upwards. It has a phallic-shaped proboscis that it uses to eat. It uses this flappy doodle on its face to dig around in the mud looking for small burrowing creatures to digest for sustenance. This thing is so weird looking that the first scientific appearance of Opabinia was met with laughter. Scientists laughing, calling me dick face. I'll show you who's the dick face! Stick face! People aren't sure how the Opabinia moves around in the water. Some thinks it scuttles around on the ground, and some thinks it undulates in the water as some sort of wiggle swim. Personally, I want it to be the wiggle swim one. So that's the one that I'm telling you that it did. If you like this video, drop me a like, comment, and subscribe, and also give me all of your views. Watch all of my other videos, or else. I want to thank at Impcat on Instagram for drawing the Timmy Turner dinosaur. They're a great artist, and you should check out their page. I also want to thank everybody that's been sending fan art so often. Ever since we started to grow, I've gotten so many amazing pieces of the Eyeball Man and Amoeba, and it's just great to see that I could create characters that people can connect with enough to want to make art for them. The next topic poll should already be up and running by the time I upload this video, so go on it and vote for your next favorite. I think the next video is going to be Lovecraft Monsters. As always, like, sub, and hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. <laughs>